oranges, sweet and fruity. We love their juice. Every German drinks an average of 8 litres per year. But for how much longer? Citrus fruits all over the world are in danger. On the plantations, death is lurking. A disease of unimaginable proportions is raging, causing billions of dollars worth of damage. Huang Long Bing, or HLB for short. Once a tree is infected with the pathogen, there is no cure. It dies a slow death. The fruits remain unripe and fall to the ground. Inedible. It's uh, pretty tough. And this is the culprit. Hardly visible to the naked eye, a tiny agent citrus psyllid, a so-called ACP, transmits the HLB pathogen and injects it directly into the fruit. And it spreads rapidly. We go in search of clues. HLB first appeared in China in 1943. From there, the pathogen spread across Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Time and again, important quarantine regulations were disregarded. This is how HLB, or greening, arrived in South America in 1990. In 2005, HLB eventually turned up in Florida. With an annual turnover of $9 billion, the Sunshine State is one of the world's major citrus suppliers. Today, the orange industry is on the brink of collapse. Peter McClure is one of those affected. Half of his 10-acre plantation has fallen foul of the pathogen in recent years. More and more trees are showing the symptoms. This is the symptoms on the leaves. It's called blotchy model. And when the phloem is plugged, the starches build up in the leaves and cause this mottling. And it's an indicator that you have greening. The fruit of diseased trees are now only suitable as fodder. That's not good. It's very acidic and uh, not enough sugar. And um, it won't make good juice. We won't be able to squeeze this and sell it. It's devastating. Um, I was born and raised in an orange grove. My family's been growing citrus. My great... Excuse me, my great-grandfather planted citrus in 1868, and uh, we've been growing citrus in Florida ever since. Um, it doesn't look like my children will be able to grow citrus. It's uh, pretty tough. Sorry about that. Crime scene, California. ACPs have now also appeared on the other side of the American continent. The first infection occurred a year ago. The diseased tree was destroyed immediately. Entire regions of the country have been placed under quarantine since then. The situation is serious. One man is fighting on the front line. The head of the Invasive Species Research Center at the University of Riverside, Mark Hoddle. The scientist is working flat out to find effective weapons against the all-powerful enemy. With our California citrus industry being worth about $1.2 billion a year, we're very worried about this disease coming here and ruining our citrus industry. What does invasive species actually mean? There have always been migrations of living creatures. But normally, they come up against natural barriers, such as bodies of water, mountains, or deserts. And these migrations are so slow that the resident species have time to adapt to the newcomers. But today, thanks to ships and aeroplanes, invasive species reach places quickly and in large numbers, where they have no natural enemies. This allows them to spread unhindered. One way to control some of these invasive species is to use their natural enemies, which have evolved with them, back in their country of origin. That's why Mark travelled to Pakistan in April, because that's where a species of wasp lives that feeds exclusively on ACPs. Mark collected the larvae to produce them in a laboratory. 
And this is what his biological weapon looks like under the microscope. Just two millimeters in size. The wasps are kept in one of the safest places in California, the campus quarantine facility in Riverside. For fear of terrorist attacks, we are not allowed to show the outside of the $15 million building, because this is where some of the most harmful insects in the world are stored. The station with the wasps and ACPs is on the second floor. We're allowed to accompany Mark. Access is via a sluice room with black light. Inside, there are fluorescent UV light tubes. UV light is very attractive to any insect, so if they have escaped and are trapped in the antechamber, they will fly to this light, and behind the light is sticky paper, and the insects will fly into it and get caught, and they can't escape from the antechamber. Strict security measures, such as corridors branching in all directions and negative air pressure. The air inside the entire unit is being sucked in constantly. This makes it impossible for insects to escape. Today, Mark will see if his plan can work. Under the microscope, the scientist wants to unleash the wasps from Pakistan onto some ACPs. Both species are barely visible to the naked eye. To keep the risk as low as possible, the laboratory specimens are not infected with HLB. In the wild, every second to third insect carries the pathogen. And just one sick psyllid is enough to kill an entire tree. OK, I think we're good now. We can start our experiment. We've got the ACP and we've got our parasitoids. Let's go. What will happen under the microscope? Can the wasps actually destroy the ACPs and thus save the orange trees? Mark's biological weapons from Pakistan target one thing in particular, the larvae of the psyllids. They mostly stick to the young shoots. Well, you know, it's really amazing how good these parasitoids are at finding their prey. The battle begins. The wasp unerringly heads for an ACP larva. And shortly afterwards, the sting goes in. The larva will die. She's fanning her wings now, and we think perhaps when they do this, the egg is actually leaving the body of the female, and she has now placed it underneath the Asian citrus psyllid nymph. And then in a few days, that egg will hatch, and that wasp larva will start eating away the belly of the Asian citrus psyllid. It'll make a hole, and then it'll crawl inside, and then feed on the guts of the psyllid, and it will kill it. This behavior makes the wasps a hot commodity among the orange producers around the world. Tomorrow, Mark plans to release the first offspring from his Pakistan trip. And what we're seeing here in the lab is exactly what we're going to see tomorrow when we go to the orange groves to release these parasites. They're going to track down these Asian citrus psyllid and kill them. But what if the wasps also carry a disease? What if the supposed miracle cure introduces a new danger? Genetic engineer Paul Rugman does a DNA analysis. Is the find from Pakistan really the right species? The wasps turning out to be another unwanted invasion doesn't bear thinking about. Hey Paul, I was wondering if you had a chance to run the DNA on those Pakistani parasitoids. Yeah, we have. Uh, I can confirm they are Tamarixia radiata, and uh, they match what the other material that we've uh, collected in Pakistan. OK, so we can go ahead and release those now. The you DNA is telling us it's the right species. You can do that. Fantastic. That's great, man. Thank you. You're welcome. So the next morning, Mark sets off for Paloma Valley. In his luggage, a cooler with 400 wasps from Pakistan. There are many growers in the valley who are organic growers and they cannot use pesticides. So the best control option that is available for them at this time is the parasitoid that we have collected from Pakistan. Orange farmer Earl Rutz is very worried. A few weeks ago, ACPs appeared in the neighboring valley. Therefore, the government has installed traps on his plantation. If ACPs are found on them during an inspection, the farm will be put under quarantine. Not a single orange will be allowed to leave the plantation. A major economic disaster. 
We know they're here just at the beginning of the population growth and uh, so this is a scary time. But uh, so we look every couple of days at some of the trees and different areas of the grove. With Mark's support, the orange farmer wants to launch a preemptive strike against the menace today. The weapons are ready for action. All that's missing is a strategic point of attack. Well, I think we should release them on the border, and we have a lemon hedge there that's very susceptible to ACP. Okay. So that would be the best spot, and we can just the spread line. them out up the line here. Excellent. Uh, that would be the best. All right, so let's get okay. going. Let's do this. The operation can begin. Should the wasps not find any ACP leaf suckers, they will starve because their diet allows no alternatives. I don't want them to find ACP, but they probably will. And so, and this is maybe the best spot. Um, this is a scientific breakthrough of the valley. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's great, so well, I'm happy to help. In total, there are already 80,000 wasps in California. Yet, it should never have come to this in the first place. Mark's urgent appeal. So the best way to control invasive species is for people simply not to move plants, animals or food from one country to another. So be honest when you enter the country and you declare on your customs forms, I don't have any plants, animals or food on me. That's the best way to stop invasive species spreading. In this case, unfortunately, too late. Is this the end of orange juice as we know it? It's a race against time. Florida has already lost. California can still win the battle, if Mark's rescue plan works. And the rest of the world? The coming months will tell.